Hey guys, welcome to another INFP scientist today. I'm going to be talking about ocean acidification, which is basically um, an environmental science topic, but I'm going to be bringing some chemistry into here, which I had to review a little bit because it's been a while, but I'm going to be talking about some pretty simple topics um, about this and concepts, so I'll get into it right away. So basically what ocean acidification means is it's the decrease in pH in the Earth's oceans. So if you do recall from chemistry, the pH scale is between 1 and 14, where 14 is the most basic and 1 is the most acidic. 7 is right in the middle, which is neutral. So we are going towards the 1 to 7 range of things with the oceans becoming more acidic, pushing towards that kind of category over there. So typically what happens is you're going to have the plants and the trees, as you know, taking in our carbon dioxide, letting out oxygen for us. Um, but the problem is that they cannot keep up with the high carbon dioxide emissions that are now in our atmosphere. And the reason for that is due to us, humans, and our emissions. And that is due to the fossil fuel burning. So there's gas, there's coal, there's oil, culprits like that. And that's why you hear so much about going towards more sustainable energy cho choices, such as solar energy or hydro, which is something we actually have here in Quebec, which I'm very grateful for. Things that are not going to cause more carbon dioxide emissions going into the atmosphere. So what the oceans are doing is they are acting as a sink. They are taking in that extra carbon dioxide um, into the oceans themselves. And about 20, 30 to 40% of the human emissions actually dissolve into these oceans, these rivers, and these lakes. But even with that, there's still an excess of carbon dioxide just because we emit so much of it every single year. And this is what's leading more towards global warming, which I will definitely do a lecture on in the future. It's a little bit too complex to get into in this one. But basically what you need to know about that is it's more extreme weather these days that's happening, more floods and hurricanes. You're getting all these really big positive feedback loops, which means that they don't naturally shut off. They kind of go off each other, kind of like a downward, downward, uh, downward spiral of sorts. That's a tongue twister. And you also get these synergistic effects, which means that when you have two different factors, they combine in such a way that they are even more powerful than just one or the other, them together is kind of this amplified effect. And this is kind of tying into global warming, creating more problems for us, and something that I will definitely be discussing in the future. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to demonstrate through chemical equations how the acidity is being caused in our oceans. So don't worry, I'm going to explain the equations, I'm going to go through it, and hopefully it will make sense to you all. And um, please let me know if my writing is coming up clear for you guys here. So what you have is the carbon dioxide here, um, and I put AQ, which means aqueous. That means it is in solution in water, in liquid. And so here you're adding the water, which, is, which means that you're adding the carbon dioxide to the oceans here. Now these double arrows mean that your equation is in equilibrium, which is something that you always want. So there's not too much energy going around. Things are in a stable state. This is a normal thing in chemistry. So it's a balanced equation. So you're going to have the carbon dioxide added to the water, and this is going to create carbonic acid, which is a weak, weak acid over here. And then the equation further continues, where you have a breakdown even further. This is bicarbonate here, and you're going to get a hydrogen ion. Then what you can do is break that down even further, and you end up with carbonates and two hydrogen ions. So these are basically ways of re uh, rewriting the equations and breaking them down further. And what the acidification actually is, is a higher concentration of these hydrogen ions. And so these are the ones that I put in the little boxes here. You're getting more concentration of this, and that is what is causing the increase in acidity in our oceans. So just to define for you guys, if you're curious what an ion is, if you don't know, it's a molecule or an atom with a net electric charge due to loss or gain of one or more electrons. So for example, the hydrogen plus, that is an example of an ion. Now the possible effects of this ocean acidification are you can have lowered metabolic rates that are occurring, uh, lowered immune responses in organisms. So basically you're messing with the biology of the organisms that are living in the oceans. They're not used to this increased acidity. They don't have that time to acclimate or get used to the environment. And so some of them die off. And you can even get these places called dead zones 
where you have so much carbon dioxide, there's no life that is able to live there. And there are these spots in the ocean that are like that, where it's a complete dead zone, which is another good topic to uh, mention in the future as well. And another huge thing that you're going to get from this ocean acidification is chlor coral bleaching, which is very near and dear to my heart because I'm a scuba diver. I've been to Bahamas, I've been to Dominican, I've been to Honduras. I've seen the reefs. I've been told many times that these are not how they used to be. There's a lot less flora and fauna, and that is because the coral supports so much life. So if you're killing off the coral, what's going to happen is you're going to kill off all these things that depend on the coral, the symbiotic relationships between the different organisms. So just briefly, I'm going to mention a process that the coral uses and use them as an example for what's happening with this ocean acidification. So what the corals actually need is this process known as calcification, which is the pre precipitation of dissolved ions into solid uh, calcium carbonate structures and the chemical uh, description of that is CaCO3. So the coral are basically these soft organisms, these polyps that live in these hard shells and without the hard shells they're not protected and they can easily be killed off or just die naturally. They're not able to survive in the oceans and the problem with the acidification is they don't allow this calcification process. So what the ocean needs is they need saturating carbonate in order to be able to calcify, have healthy coral, thriving ecosystems, and everything's good. So I'll just show you guys one last equation to show what's happening and why calcification is not taking place in a lot of um, zones in the ocean. So in this equation, I'm sure you recognize our friend here, carbon dioxide from before. You're adding it to water, but here you're also adding the carbonate ion, and this is what needs to be present in the oceans for the um, coral to be able to calcify. And you're creating bicarbonate here, which ties into the other equations I've showed you before, the acidification and such. So this is showing that you're taking the carbonate out of solution. This is what the corals need. It's being taken out so the corals can no longer use it, they cannot calcify, and this is why there's so many problems. So I want to discuss this because I think a lot of people don't really understand what's going on in terms of global warming and acidification and all these environmental problems people kind of threw, like turn their nose up at because they don't understand. So I wanted to kind of mention a little bit about it today. Hopefully you guys learned a little bit and you can see why I find it such an important topic, why I decided to pursue environmental sciences as my minor because I really um, enjoyed and benefited from learning about it. And so if you guys enjoyed, please give me a big thumbs up, would be much appreciated. And I will see you precious gems on Monday for another Introvert Island. Thanks for watching guys. Bye everyone.